Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm Paul, and today we are going to be taking a look at this is a Ukrainian anti armor team engaging targets, uh, Russian tanks with what look like probably their end laws. Now, we are going to be taking a look at this, but more importantly, we're going to be breaking down what, what the Ukrainians do right and what the Russians have been doing wrong this entire conflict. Let's get into it. So you can see here, this looks like the outside of a highway, right? These are probably T-wall barriers. Generally for highways, what you see in the civilian world, right, is because people don't want to listen to cars zooming back and forth. Uh, they may also have been erected to keep cars out of this uh, drainage ditch or canal. In Iraq, famously, the, along some of the major main supply routes used by U.S. forces, they would actually erect walls like this deliberately to keep insurgents from being able to stage ambushes. Obviously, if you had this canal here, you would be unable to stage an ambush even as vehicles passed by. So these can be up for all sorts of reasons. But you can see the armor team, before they're getting into their exact attack position, they're already started to prep their anti-armor weapons. They've got a, a, a impromptu bridge erected here. Now, you're going to point out, if, you've, if you're a fan of this channel, and if you are, you should hit subscribe. I have a dream of getting to 100k subscribers, and I know that if every viewer of this video just hits subscribe, uh, I would get there. So what you're going to see here is an impromptu bridge, and you're going to tell me that, hey, Paul, they're not pulling security, and that's correct. But you don't want your armor kill teams to be trying to pull security, right? Guard themselves around 360 degrees. You want them focused on the one critical task at hand, and that is destroying those enemy armored forces. So what you're going to have is the rest of your squad or platoon, they are going to be already set in position to make sure that no one's going to sneak up on your kill team. So not visible, right? Because they're probably in a covered and concealed position. All around these guys are going to be their squad mates looking out for them. So they do a final check. Make sure you're ready. One crosses the bridge. He fires his end law. The next end law sets. He's probably, so what you're going to want to do that's really important with any anti-tank rocket, you want to make sure your back blast area is clear, right? These rockets are powered by, obviously, a small rocket engine. So they are going to be, yes, pushing forward, but that means that back blast area can actually uh, hurt or even kill people in that are cl too close to the weapon. So what you're going to want to do, if you have two people firing side by side, one fires, right? The other fires, and then you both retreat, or in this case, it looked like like one fired, retreated, and then the other person fired only when they made sure that their battle buddy was clear. Ah, so you heard that, you, you heard that little pop, you saw those rounds on the right side. That actually means that no, they fired one, two, right, and now they're both going to retreat. That's probably a safer option. You really don't want to have one of your battle buddies passing back and forth, right? you for example might not you might think that you're communicating with them but maybe your rocket blast actually deafened them for a little bit and they didn't hear you say hey i'm passing behind you so this is a good call right you could see also the uh other anti-tank team member has fired his rocket switched to his uh individual weapon and is putting rounds down range nothing wrong with doing that certainly uh providing some cover and fire to his buddy and boom, they've both popped it off and the engagement's done. That is exactly how fast you want those engagements to go. This is actually from, I think, February. So early in the war, and it's a testament to how well-trained and well-prepared Ukrainian forces were to engage in anti-armor operations from day one. So what is it? Paul, you're asking yourself, what did the Russians do wrong there? You barely even saw them. Well, here's the thing. What the Russians always do wrong, and it's true in all the footage we've seen, and it's not clear that they've really learned much, is that they don't support their armor with infantry, right? You saw it there. Those guys were at their most vulnerable when that door opened and they got in position. But armored vehicles take a long time to see targets, to react to them, to return fire. So what you'd want to have is infantry looking around, scanning on that eye level, 
making sure that an area is secure. Even better, you might want to have infantry scanning either side of those roads. Imagine if that squad encountered a platoon of Russian infantry who were doing what's called screening, which is sort of like pre-scanning a road or other critical area to make sure that there aren't enemy positioned to deal significant damage. And so that to me is the classic Russian move of using tanks as reconnaissance vehicles, basically pushing them out with no idea what is waiting ahead. The Ukrainians seem to have figured this out, though. They use drones. We've seen lots of drone combat footage to recon an area. They are willing to use their infantry uh, to support their armor operations, right? They understand combined arms much better than the Russians do. And I think a lot of that is because for years, for something like eight years, the U.S. military has had training missions at almost every level of the Ukraine forces, ranging all the way from their small units all the way up to their national defense, uh, Ministry of Defense levels. The U.S. has been instilling in the Ukrainians a way of thinking about warfare that involves all the parts working together seamlessly to make things happen. And when we've seen effective Ukraine operations, it's because the Ukrainians are doing just that. They're using all the tools they have at their disposal and they're using them together. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Again, hit subscribe. If there's other combat footage you want, check it out down below. Oh, and you also want to become a member of the patreon which i usually shout out the members but oh there we go there we go yep check it out right there thanks a lot guys i'll see you in the next one